happy Monday, everybody, and welcome to Houston Life. It is July 13th. Courtney has the day off today, but do not worry. I'm not going to be flying solo today in Studio B. Back by very popular demand, please welcome Brandon Bork, my friends. Brandon, come on out. There he is. My quarantine buddy, my partner in life. Hello. Have a seat. You know, it feels so good to actually be able to sit a little closer at this desk. Courtney and I have been seated so far away, but because you and I are quarantined together at home, yeah. then, uh, you know, we can sit only a few feet Imagine apart today. socially distance at home from one another. I know. Well, some people have been in that situation where someone tests positive for COVID and then the other person is left yeah. to, uh, you know, wonder how to deal with it. How you doing, Brandon? Great. Very well. Good. Cheers. We have Cheers. some non-alcoholic spritzers, so. A little energy drink, I think. Cheers. Cheers two cups of coffee, so we'll see how this goes. So how are you able to, to come and join us on the show today? I mean, Brandon does have a full-time job in the Manil Collection. Yeah, I actually just had a, a work call like five minutes before this. Yeah, did you, Madeline called me. Do they know you're here at work today? I told her. She goes, oh, so you're not working at the Manil right now. I was like, no, I work this morning. I'm on a lunch break, and then after this, I'll continue working. Yeah, technically it is your lunch break yeah. right now. So the Manil Collection, I've mentioned it on the show so many times, it's one of our favorite spots in Houston. And because today is 713 day, right? Yeah. July 13th, 713 day. Um, it's it's perfectly appropriate that the Manil is someplace we love to go and visit, but the museum has been closed since March, Since March, right? yeah. But the third week of March, we closed everything going on. We had, you know, every intention of hoping to reopen in July. Um, but unfortunately, with cases still rising, we're just taking a break. And we've all, it's been really nice because we've all been sort of strategizing what do we do, like, you know, when we do reopen, how do we sort of acclimate to this new new, new normal? Yeah. yeah, wearing masks, right? Well, and if you haven't been, again, it's closed, but the Manila is a 30-acre campus right in the heart of the city. It's yeah. right there between Alabama West and Richmond. Alabama and Richmond, and then Mandel and Yupon next to University of St. Thomas. So it's an entire neighborhood, and they have so much green space. Our executive producer, Katie, she and her partner, Van, and their dog, Penny, they go out to Manila Park all the time. Oh, yeah. And it's great that even during this time when so many places are shut down, you can still go to the Manila. And yeah, and so that was actually one of the big reasons um, the founders, when they were creating this building with the architect, is that they wanted art to still be accessible to everyone, even when the museum was closed. So we've been closed for months now, and people are still visiting. You can still peek through windows and see art. Yeah. Well, on 713 Day, we want to hear from you, as we always do. We want to know your favorite spots in and around H-Town. Today is a great day to, you know, celebrate them, to post photos to social media. So please let us know some of your favorites, and we're going to try to share them throughout today's show. Also, if you have any questions for Brandon, feel free to submit those through our Facebook page, because um, th typically he gets a lot of questions. It's so funny. Where were we? Well, actually, I remember where we were now, but I can't say where. Um, this was a few months ago. I think before before COVID, and there was someone who, I don't know, was maybe a little bit tipsy oh. and kept saying over and over, like, Brandon, you need to have your own segment on the show. Like, you need to come on the show more often. Derek, yeah. like, how do we make this happen? He's like, I'm going to write your contract. We're going to get you on that show. I was like, I mean, I don't know how that works, but we can try. But he wouldn't leave it alone. No, he wouldn't let it go. But people often say this, though, whether we're at the grocery store or wherever, people are, are so nice when they stop Brandon and say hello. So we're glad to have you as part of the Thanks. Houston Life family. Also on 713 Day, I have to give a shout out to my eldest sister, Heather. It's her birthday it today. Happy birthday, Heather. Happy birthday, Heather. And she is enjoying those uh, 116 degree temperatures down there in Phoenix, Arizona, where she lives. That's such a great photo. Where is that? Is that? That's downtown Salt Lake City. We're all a bit younger in this photo. Heather's on the right side, and then I'm next to my mom in the middle, and that's Elizabeth on the left-hand side. And it must have been, my hair is pretty bleached blonde, so it must, must have, have been, been lifeguarding. Yeah, one summer at the pool. So maybe the summer before I moved to California. Um, but happy birthday, so Heather. So cute, love that family. Yeah, they're good people, right? Okay, so 713 Day. You know, one of our favorite things to do here on Houston Life, and actually one of our favorite things to do together, is to shop small, to support small businesses. Local businesses, yeah. Local business. And during COVID, we, of course, we know how tough it's been for so many of these businesses who've had to get creative and try to find new ways to sell their products, right? Yeah, um, so we did that this weekend, and we visited 4th and Nomad, which is a new store on Yale. Yes. Um, I think so, it's not a new store, they were 
in a previous location across the street. In Heights Mercantile. In Heights Mercantile. This is just a larger location, but yeah, so many great options for gifts and things for yourself and the family. It was really fun. So we met this guy, Ivan, who's the manager and owner or creator of this store called Moochila, and check that out. He is shaping a Panama hat, and a Panama hat is one of these traditional hats. They're actually made in Ecuador, uh, and, and look at these bats, too. They carry these bats from a company called Pillbox, so he does have some partnerships with some other local businesses, but it was so great to meet Ivan. We went in because I wanted a new summer hat and something to protect my ears from all the sun because uh, my dermatologist said you should watch your ears because people often develop skin cancers on their ears. Yeah, and people forget to put sunscreen on their ears. Yeah, I know, and I'm one of those people. I forget all the time. So I've got the, the new hat, but we ended up buying one of those bats, and it was so great going to check them. Oh, it actually looks great with this outfit. It does. You planned that. I did not. <laughs> Wow, this is so great. Guys, it's stylish and it's protective. But go see Ivan at Muchila there at uh, Fourth and Nomad and tell him we say hi. And while you're there, Fourth and Nomad has all these other shops inside. You can see that was still a shot of Muchila. Here's a wide shot of some of the vendors. It's a beautiful space. They even have a candle bar at the back of this location. There it is right there. Right now they have these candle making kits to mm -hmm. go so you can purchase them and take them home. Uh, but once, you know, COVID is behind us they will uh they'll resume those classes oh yeah i can't wait to do that you know how i love a candle yeah brandon does. we have a we actually have a candle closet it's, at home it's pretty bad it's actually pretty good what do you think how many candles do you think are in there i don't know we store our, our linens in there too we have the towels in yeah, there they smell good. so they smell you they open smell that door nice. and it's just like a waft of <laughs> 30 <laughs> a waft of candle smells we love our candles so as long as we're chatting about um 713 day and some of our favorite spots in town another one which is really close to us because we live right near downtown discovery green oh yeah such a great spot I actually used to live across the street from discovery green and i would walk our dog there twice a day and it's just it's so great to think that that was a former parking lot and now it's just this beautiful green space with public art and you know restaurants and all sorts of you know great things close by yeah those aerial photos of what that spot used to look like 11 years ago before it became yeah. discovery green it really is incredible and a great place to uh put on your mask and go out and you know put a blanket down on the grass and be socially distant. Sure. Cafeteria in Edo, it's like coffee, but cafeteria with a K, also one of our favorite spots, very funny. It's a no cash anymore, right? Mm -hmm. As so many businesses are avoiding the, the exchange of cash for hy hygiene purposes, but it's right there behind the sports bar owned by Brian Ching. That's pitch 25 on your right-hand side, but they've got a great space inside and outside. Inside, it's some great mid-century modern furniture. We also love a spot called Spring Street Wine and Beer Garden, and this is a place, Brandon, you first introduced me to. Yeah, so Joel, one of my best friends, told me about it. He's like, dude, Monday nights, pizza, bottle of wine, it's like $25. I was like, uh, sold. I will absolutely be there. Yeah. Um, and so we went back with our friend Lem, who was visiting. Mm -hmm. This was a while it's, back, before it's the such mask a great mandate. Place. They have great food, great service, great drinks, and it's, you know, you're under the Texas sky. It's beautiful. Yeah, it's a great place to go. And Floriculture, we featured them on the show. You know Brandon and I love plants at the house. How many do we have now? 60? I, I lose count. <laughs> We're actually trying to give some away. Yeah, we have to. Like, there's just, we, we're running up and down, like, four floors, like, trying to water all these plants and, you know, keep them alive. <laughs> it does take a lot of work to water the plants. Um, we do, we do love the floriculture, so check them out if you need, um, need some plants. And then, of course, uh, Smither Park. Oh, there's a floriculture plant. Here's the problem with their plants. They grow. They yeah, grow. And I don't know if you can tell by this photo, but this thing is, like, eight feet wide. It's, it is huge. <laughs> and it keeps sprouting these new leaves. Obviously, we want it to do well, but my goodness. Yeah, it's doing... And uh, my side of the bed, it's, it's, that's, so that's my side of the bed. And so I, when I wake up in the morning, it's like Little Shop of Horrors. I'm like, oh my gosh. Come on. It is not like <laughs> yes. that. It's like Grey Gardens it's like a Audrey bit. 3. Well, what's funny is when I lived in L.A., I couldn't get anything to grow. My house yeah. didn't really, you know, get enough light to grow things. And we, remember last year we planted some jasmine in front of the house? Yeah, it was, what, like six inches high? And we're all like, oh, my gosh, I, I really hope this grows. And now it's, like, <laughs> taking over our neighbor's house. We have to cut it down, like, two or three times a year. Yeah. But it smells so good. It does. I love jasmine in the springtime. So you went to, even though you were, you were born in Florida and you grew up in Louisiana, you actually went to high school in the Woodlands area. Yeah, uh, just like north of Houston. So we spent a lot of um, 
time, not, we didn't spend as much time in Houston, um, but you know, lived there for, gosh, 11 years. And the only time we would drive through Houston is when we were visiting family in Galveston. My aunt lives in Friendswood. Um, but I know I forgot about this story. Um, not spending a lot of time in Houston. It's obviously such a, like, a vast place, and you could yeah. spend like weeks and weeks and still like not see everything. You could spend hours driving from one side to the other. Right? Yeah, and I actually think I Googled like how long it would take to drive like the Beltway, and it's like an hour and a half just to like make a complete circle, yeah. something crazy like that. Yeah. But I remember driving on 610, like right at Westheimer, like San Felipe, and it was like nighttime. My best friend from high school, Aaron, we were like, I think going back to like our house. Um, and we were like passing by, like, and I was like, oh my gosh, downtown looks so small. And he was like, dude, that's the Galleria. And I was like, oh. <laughs> I mean, I don't blame you, especially now, too, the Galleria. I mean, they're all kinds yeah, of buildings. Yeah, it's big, but also, up. you know me, I wasn't wearing my glasses. I never wore my glasses. It was dark outside, so. That's okay. We forgive you. I remember when I first came to Houston, and I stayed at Hotel Derek. Yeah, right uh, there. So we were probably passing right by Hotel Derek. Yeah, that's where I stayed when I was auditioning for Houston Life, and they brought in all these different host candidates, mm -hmm. and they did a whole mix and match scenario, and I checked into that hotel. I put on that cow print robe. Loved that cow print <laughs> robe. That's the best part Should of the hotel. <laughs> but then I remember looking out the window and seeing the Galleria and seeing I, I was I had a hard time finding my bearings in the city. So it's I feel it took you. me when I moved back after college, it took me probably a full year to like get around without using any sort of GPS. Wow. A full year. Okay. I mean, well, I still use it. I use it here. So I use GPS every day, mostly to avoid traffic. Okay. So uh, speaking of getting to know things and each other, right? Yeah. We have a game that maybe many of you have seen on TikTok or Instagram. A game that is sort of to uh, I don't know how how well do you know each other? Yeah. Right? That's the idea. So our producers printed up these arrows, and I think they have a series of questions that will pop up on the screen, and we have to both. Receive respond just instantaneously, right? Okay, yeah, it has to be like super quick. You can't think about it. Okay, so let's go ahead and put up that first question. Uh, we don't know what these questions are, so um, yeah, who's most likely to do whatever? We'll be late to a meeting. Absolutely. Yeah, me for sure. Okay, well that was easy. Lock their keys in the car. I probably have to be me. <laughs> probably Brandon. Yeah, my, yeah. my car key is actually your my car, phone, I don't so think we'll, I never lose my key. Yeah, your car probably wouldn't lock. If your key is in there. I don't know. I don't know. Uh, the next one. Have one drink too many. I mean, I mean. I don't. We try to keep each other in check. Yeah. We're so Brandon will pull me aside and be like, you know what? You probably shouldn't be doing that. Speaking of, like, I feel like I'm drinking a White Claw right now. It's like, not it a White Claw. It's like it, just an energy drink. But No, it's just green tea and ginger and guarana seed. Do you have a White Claw? <laughs> no, at work? No, we don't drink here at work. Okay, what's the next one? Sleep until noon. Oh, yeah, that would be me. That would be me. Oh, yeah, I'm I, always like, <laughs> seven in the morning. And I'm like, just just five more minutes. I'm the guy it's who's Saturday. always five more minutes, five more minutes. This morning, it was rough waking up, it wasn't was. it? Yeah. Yeah. I didn't want to get up. We spent a long weekend in the sun and in the pool. It was, it was very nice. Okay, any more? How many of these do we have? Forget deodorant. Yeah. But the but thing is, I don't wear deodorant every day. Why? I don't. Explain why. My armpits don't sweat. I mean, I have, so I have hyperhidrosis. My hands and feet sweat constantly. Armpits don't sweat. He, he does have hyperhidrosis. Wow, you've never, like, talked about that publicly. No, it's just, like, not something I, you know, actively oh. mention. But it's been a struggle my entire life. But I guess the one upside is I don't have sweaty, stinky armpits. <laughs> it's true. He never smells. And if I forget my deodorant, I smell like hamburger helper by lunchtime. I'm Even when saying. I played tennis, like all through high school, I wouldn't wear deodorant. Really? Yeah. Oh my gosh. Okay, I think we have the last one. That is, that's a skill to not have to wear deodorant. Looks like we have a last question that may be popping up. Maybe not. I'll say me anyway. Text an ex-boyfriend. Yeah. Well, that's me. You're nicer to like your ex-boyfriends. I don't want to talk to mine. Well, that's a little different though. I, I, am, I am friends with all my ex-boyfriends, yeah. except the ones who hit me. I'll say same. Because those relationships are worth 
cutting off Leave people. it in the gutter. Violence is never the answer, right? I'm so glad to have you here today. Me too. It's so this fun. so fun. We got to spend the weekend together, and now you're at I work know. with me. I know. We woke up, I was like, should I ride with you? Should I just, like, should we drive together? Should we carpool? Yeah, I know. I know. Okay, well, folks, listen up, because one thing, when we were out this weekend, do you remember how many people with flat tires off the side of the road we saw? Yeah. What's up know, with that? I don't know what it means. I saw another one right outside of our house by the police station in 59. You're kidding. Someone was changing a tire right oh there. Oh my gosh. Maybe it's the heat. I don't know. Maybe it's something in the air. But if you haven't had a flat, knock on wood. And folks, if you did get a flat tire, would you know how to change it yourself? Well, if not, You Do It Auto Repair has a perfect solution for you. They're a self-service auto garage that allows customers to perform their own maintenance on their own vehicles. Isn't that cool? Uh, yeah, I wouldn't be able to do it. Yeah, you could though. You could. We're about to learn how right now. This is all DIY style. They also offer women's only auto classes. So throughout today's show, Lauren Kelly will be learning firsthand how to change a tire right here in the KPRC parking lot. And I think she's joining us live right now. There she is. Lauren, what a cool concept this is. Right? First of all, I got to point out the special hashtag for you doing auto repair. Do you even wrench, bro? And <laughs> clearly the answer is no, I don't. I'm one of four girls in my household. And when it comes to changing tire, guess what? Myself, like probably every woman in Houston, call my dad, call my husband. But I've, I've laid down the law. They've made this so simple that we are going to learn how to change this tire right here in our parking lot today. And I'm here with Mr. DIY. Marcus is here from you. You do an auto repair, but their female auto technician, Rachel File, Ray Ray. Uh, and also by the end of this segment, I will have my own fun nickname to be part of this auto tech group. But Ray Ray, Rachel, we're gonna we're gonna change this tire. You're gonna show me all the things that we need to do it, and it's really not that hard. Not at all. Not at all. She says it's it like a pro. Like, no, <laughs> it's not hard at all. Anything's easy once you know how to do it, and that's the simplest thing. Once you've been taught, it's not that hard. But if you don't know, then. It's gonna be difficult. All right, so what we're gonna start with, let's just get our tools ready. You've given me a pair of gloves. What yes. else are we gonna need just really fast? So we're gonna have a lug wrench to loosen up the lugs, okay. and then a jack to get everything jacked up. And of course, you're, if you don't have a chalk block or anything, you can use a rock or something to secure the front wheel. All right, and our spare tire, which we're always gonna change, the back tire, I will tell you, I see I've already started learning. So see, Derek and Brandon, this is gonna be so simple. I'm gonna be able to teach you guys by the end of the show today. So check back in in just a little bit and we'll check out my progress, yeah? That is fantastic. Yeah, I could use a few pointers. I don't think I've ever changed a tire. Hey, it's a good skill to have, especially <laughs> here in Houston. Okay, Lauren, we're going to check back in with you, as you just mentioned, throughout the show to see your progress. And Brandon, I think we're going to check back in with you a few times throughout yeah, today's show. So enjoy uh, some snacks in the green room. And still ahead on Houston Life, we're going to meet the Sugarland native becoming a rising talent in the indie film world. We'll chat with writer Angela Chang right after this. Well, the action-packed dark comedy Lucky Grandma has been getting rave reviews, and one of the co-writers of the film is a Sugarland native. Her name is Angela Chang. She is joining us now from home. And uh, you were just telling me during commercial break, this is the first time you've actually had to dress up a little bit, Angela. How's it feel? <laughs> I, honestly, I feel very fancy. <laughs> well, you look fancy, and we're so glad you're joining us today. Uh, Lucky Grandma, we're going to learn more about the film in just a moment, but let's talk about how someone like yourself, how do you go from Sugarland to working on the big screen? It's, it's really exciting. Thanks. Yeah, I mean, I, I basically went to film school in 2002, and I'd always wanted to, to make movies. Um, I'd always dreamed about it, and I just kind of made my way in, um, moved to New York to try to make indie films, and here I am. And here you are. Okay, so let's chat a little bit more about your history. Went to Clements High School, and you used to perform Chinese stand-up comedy as a child here in Houston. Yeah. So how did that, how did that come about? Because that seems like, I mean, stand-up is an exceptionally uh, difficult skill. So how did you start doing that as a kid? Yeah, so that was actually, it was also, it was Mandarin Chinese stand-up comedy, so everything in, was in Mandarin. Um, I started performing when I was five, um, and it was actually my mom's idea. She's kind of a stage mom and um, wanted me to be able to speak fluent uh, Chinese and English on stage, and so she wrote the scripts. She would book me, and our audience was the kind of burgeoning Taiwanese immigrant community, 
And so I think it was enormous comfort for them to see a little kid on stage be able to speak um, English with like a Texas twang and uh, be able to break back and forth um, from like Texas twang to Mandarin Chinese. Mm. So I'm not sure it was all that funny, but I think it was really entertaining because I was like a little kid. And this led you to create a short film called Ten and Two about a Chinese American housewife who essentially she learned how to drive so she could leave her husband. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I think it wasn't totally a uh, it wasn't like a one to one connection from uh, Mandarin Chinese stand up comedy to the short film. But I grew up in a really tight knit Chinese community and it, you know, so much of my storytelling comes from that Chinese community. And this short film was really based on um, a story of an auntie who had learned that her husband was cheating on her and then figured out how to drive so that she could actually confront him with it. So, um, so yeah. Telling real stories about real people seems to be something that you have such a knack for. And we've said so many times here on the show, it's a popular saying that truth is stranger than fiction, right? That what happens in our lives becomes such inspiration for the art world. So talk to us about how Lucky Grandma unfolded and tell us a little bit about this story. I haven't seen the film yet. I can't wait, but I understand it's about a chain smoking grandma. Yeah. Yeah. So Lucky Grandma is about an 80 year old ornery superstitious grandma who lives in um, Chinatown, Manhattan. And she's told by the fortune teller that she has like a lucky day ahead of her um, and that she should really keep her eyes open. So she goes to um, so taking advantage of this lucky day, she goes to the casino, she gambles and spoiler alert, she sort of loses all the money. But then she finds a bag of money. Um, on the bus ride home and realizes that this must be her lucky day. But then lo and behold, she takes the money home and the next day she is um, visited by the, the local Chinese mafia. Um, so yeah, it's a, it's a dark comedy. Oh wow, surprise, the mafia's at the front door. <laughs> That's, um, and let's talk a little bit about how the film's success, I mean, really sort of blew up. 96% approval rating on Rotten Tomatoes. That is huge. The film has also been recently named one of the best films of 2020 by Vulture and IndieWire magazine. Those are pretty, um, those are pretty major kudos. How does that feel? It feels great. I mean, we're really, really proud. We weren't sure what to expect because of COVID, but... Um, there's been such a community of um, in independent um, theaters that really wanted to still keep watching movies alive. And so uh, Lucky Grandma is part of the virtual cinemas release during these like unprecedented times. And people have been able to enjoy watching the movie in the comforts of their living room. And so we, we count ourselves as very lucky, but also very proud that um, it's finally out there for the audience to see. Yeah, and we can pre-order the movie right now on iTunes. It premieres next month, August 4th. And one thing I think is really cool that you're doing, part of the proceeds from the film will go to support some of these art house movie theaters who have really, really been struggling during COVID. Yes, that's right. So you can actually watch um, virtually right now if you go to a place like Alamo Draft House On Demand oh. um, and search for Lucky Grandma, you can actually rent the movie right now. And those proceeds does help uh, places, art house cinemas like Alamo um, Draft House. And then on iTunes, if you pre-order right now, those proceeds actually go to help um, an organization called Welcome to Chinatown, uh, which supports Chinatown in uh, New York City um, because it was hit especially hard uh, by COVID. Abs yeah, absolutely. I know it's... Um so many of my friends have been posting things uh, on their social media pages just about the ridiculously unfair backlash that the Chinese and Asian American community have been experiencing during COVID. Um, but you know what, there, there are a lot more good people in the world than there are horrible. I try to focus on that. We're almost out of time, just about 30 seconds left, but I understand in addition to working on podcasts for TED Talks and short films, you're developing a screenplay about real estate in Houston. That's actually just one of the projects that I'm working on. But um, my dad is a is an architect and who's been working in Houston for years. And so I have a particular interest in real estate and property development. I think that doesn't sound that sexy for a screenplay, but but it is about a con artist. 
though. Okay, we're looking forward to seeing that. Angela, thank you so much for your time. Again, the film is called Lucky Grandma. You can find it online, and again, you can pre-order for iTunes for an August 4th release. Angela Chang, thanks so much. Thanks, Derek. We will be right back with more Houston Life. Welcome back to Houston Life, everybody. What were you doing during the last segment? Texting your mom? My mom, my boss. <laughs> your boss was like, oh, I see you on Yeah, TV. a lot of my coworkers were like, don't get too comfortable in that chair. I was like, okay, I won't. Your boss, this Judith. Is, yeah. Just... Hi, Judith. <laughs> I'm sure she's watching now. Hey, Judy. So we did get some really nice viewer comments. Thank you guys for sending them in. I think we're going to pop some up on the screen right now. This question comes in from Lynn. Who controls the AC and heat at our house, Brandon? That's a heated subject. Oh, I get it. I get it. We both do. I don't know. I like it colder. You like it warmer. It's like a... I don't know. His temperature fluctuates more than mine does. And I have more of a tolerance to, you know, I don't have to like instantly be cool if the house is a little bit warm. Yeah, because I could be hot. I'm like, I'm cold, hot, give me a blanket, turn off the AC. Yeah, he's a little more finicky with the AC yeah. thing, but I don't know. It, uh, like, we also have AC issues. It's just, it's a, <sighs> yeah, we it's do. a gamble. Endless, endless. Okay, let's put up another one. They say opposites attract. This is from Cheryl. How are you both different and how do you deal with those differences? Ooh, that's a great that's question, good. Cheryl. You take, you go first. I think I might need a minute. Well, first of all, people oftentimes will ask us if we're brothers, <laughs> which is always kind of an awkward question. Someone asked me that about an hour ago. <laughs> really? <laughs> oh, are you brothers? So if it happens, you know, in the grocery store, oh, are you are you brothers? No, no. We're close. <laughs> oh, we're close. We're close, we're close like family. Yeah. yeah. I don't know. I mean, we we are different in in so many ways. Yeah. I mean, I would say you're maybe a little more of an introvert in some situations. Yeah, and you're, you know, obviously you have a, your own show, and so you're more bubbly and, I don't know, excited and out there. I tend to be more, like, on the reserve side sometimes. See, the thing is, during COVID, I feel like people have really gotten to know each other, right? I mean, the thing that I learned about Brandon, you guys know this, that he can't put eye drops in his eye. It's a weird... We need to get it on video sometimes. I it's can't stand it. It's my really like, my problem. mom would have to do it when I was a kid. I'm like, I can't. <laughs> like, his eyes I freak slam out. shut. Um, but, you know, during COVID, we, it's a good thing we like each other because we can just sit and... It's been nice to yeah. just like sit and talk. Some nights, literally, we'll sit down on the couch with a, a glass of wine at 7 p.m. And at midnight, we're still just chatting with each other. Didn't even turn on the TV. We just talk. Yeah, we actually don't turn the TV on a whole lot, which is kind of nice. Yeah, what TV? All right, let's go back out to Lauren Kelly. She is live in our parking lot getting a lesson on how to change a tire. We're going to check in with her and our friends at You Do It Auto Repair. After the break, it looks like she's getting suited up with those gloves. So let's take a quick commercial break and we will be right back. Welcome back. It is another hot day out there. Let's get a check of the weather with meteorologist Eric Breit. Hey, good afternoon. I hope you're staying cool in the air conditioning this afternoon. It is a Orcher. Fourth day in a row for a heat advisory. We've got heat index readings well over 100 degrees right now. Temperatures in the 90s. We're going to top out right near 100 degrees later on this afternoon. Plenty of sunshine. We've got a big ridge of high pressure keeping us sunny, keeping us hot, and keeping us very, very dry. No chance for rain in the forecast today. Your heat index at the peak heating portion of the day, 108 to 114. So our heat advisory goes until 8 this evening. Here is what it's going to feel like across southeast Texas, 108, 109, 110, 11, 112. You pick your number. It is hot. Temperatures down just a touch as we head through the week this week. Humidity stays up there, so the feels like temperature is going to be a big problem all week long. Slight chances for rain into the weekend, but most of us are going to stay dry. Stay cool out there and stay safe. Yeah, and drink lots of water as well. Eric, thank you so much for that. Can you imagine the days before air conditioning? My goodness, it must have been a struggle. All right, so it's time to check back in now with Lauren Kelly, who is in the KPRC parking lot getting that lesson on how to change a tire. And Lauren, oh my gosh, it's so hot outside, but you know, sometimes no, know you got to change a tire. About. It's not the hottest part of the day. Oh. Yeah, Eric just told me it feels like it's going to get to 108. We're there. It's definitely <laughs> okay. feeling like 108 uh -oh. right now, but that's okay. 
Hey, I've got my friends from You Do It Auto Repair. Marcus and Rachel are here. Mr. DIY himself and Ray Ray. And they are going to show me how to change a tire because it's a really good skill to have, especially on the Houston freeways or the roads where if you don't have a spare tire, which you were telling me, they don't come with all cars anymore. No, they don't. Some so, vehicles are either going to have the fix a flat with the uh, like an air compressor or, um, you know, you might have an extended mobility tire, run flat, yeah. where the tire itself, the sidewall, is extra reinforced and you continue driving on it as if you would a spare, which is 50 gotcha. miles an hour gotcha. up to 50 miles. So this is just a really great skill to have just in case of an emergency. So let's get started. You guys have three locations around town. And basically at their garages, you come in, they supply the tools and the safety equipment, and you do your own auto repair. So they're going to teach me today how to change this tire. So what do you have in your hand, Rachel? So these are two different types of lug wrenches that you might find if you have a spare tire. Um, so, you know, this was the one that came out of my car. This is the one that came with this one. Generally speaking, the longer the handle, the more leverage you're going to have, and it's going to be easier to loosen the bolts. Up. Okay, and what you said, so. you want to loosen the bolts before you jack the car up. Yes, do not jack up the vehicle before you do that, because think of it, you're on the side of the road, right? and then plus the wheel could spin okay. if you don't have the... Well, let's let's try to do this. Which one are you going to hand me? Well, we're going to use the one that came with this car, yes. correct? Okay, so I'm a lefty, and I'll be staying. Am I okay on this side? Yeah. You're going to definitely have to show me how to put <laughs> so this on. Go ahead and put it in. Okay, and then I'm spinning righty-tighty, lefty-loosey, right? Now, one thing you want to think of is you want to you're going to want to stand up okay and you want to put your weight into it so if you're doing it where you're pulling it's mm -hmm. going to be more difficult if you push, push on it, it you're putting your weight into it so you're going to push on this side oh my god <laughs> okay hold on we're going to definitely oh there we go okay got there it go. got it got yeah. it i and you swear can step on it too yeah okay okay i swear i'm a little bit stronger <laughs> than you guys probably think i am so you're just going to loosen it up enough you don't okay. want to take it okay so it's pretty it's fairly loose we're going to do this yeah. with all of them exactly okay Oh, God, here we go. Okay, you didn't think I was going to get a workout in today, huh? <laughs> okay, so that one's nice and loose. Let's get it on this. There are... Oh, my God. Some of them are definitely on harder than others. <laughs> yep, you can use your foot if you need to. Uh, okay. Uh, okay, see? Foot action worked. Okay, that's loose. Got two more. You guys are probably like, yeah, 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 we knew this. But you have to understand, I came from a house full of girls, so it was daddy to the rescue. Okay, last one. Okay, step on it with my foot. Okay, got it. Here we go. Rachel, I might need you to pull it that way. No worries. <laughs> that one was definitely on there tighter. Step on it with your foot. You can always take it off and move it around. Okay, jiggle it around. Throw your weight into it. Okay. Okay. So, okay. So those, them loose? those are pretty loose. All right. Cool. So uh. now we're going to jack the vehicle up. Okay. And then we can take everything off and uh, replace the spare. Okay. So safely, we're going to jack the car up, yes. right? Because I'm going to do that with <laughs> our arms. <laughs> what tool are we going to use to do that? So we've got a floor jack here. Um, some vehicles will come with a scissor jack, but we always recommend Something like this is a lot safer and more secure. Okay. So definitely is it female simple. friendly to use? So easy. It's so user friendly. <laughs> okay, let's see how it works. Okay. So there's gonna be certain jack points on your vehicle. Okay. And, and this is uh, all could be taught in the women's only classes that you guys offer, correct? Yes, this is one of the things that we teach. Changing tires, changing the oil, all of those things. Okay. Derek and Brandon, we are going to get to work trying to jack this car up uh, in the heat, which we will be taking a water break. Uh, but it's going to be fun. I know that we can do this, Rachel. We are going to do this. Yes. You do it, auto repair. We're live in the KPRC parking lot. Wish me luck. This tire's coming off, and I'm going to change it correctly. Yes, Back you will, you. Lauren. You're going to do a great job. I'm glad you're about to take a water break. We're going to see you again in about 10 minutes. Oh, like <laughs> and coming up later this week on Houston Life, don't let your produce end up in the trash. We've got simple tips to help you cut back on food waste and save money. What you can do to make your produce last a bit longer. That's happening on Wednesday's show. We'll be right back. 
Well, welcome back. If you struggled with weight loss and are ready to take control of your diet and health, our next guest is here to help. Whether your goal is to lose 10 pounds or 30 pounds, Innovative Lasers of Houston CEO Laura Alexis promises she's got the solution. Laura, welcome to the show. It's great to see you. Hope you're staying cool on this uh, triple digit heat day. So first of all, let's just jump right in. The, the Zerona laser, that's what we can see behind you right now. Walk us through how this laser works and what it does to people's bodies. Absolutely. First of all, thank you for having me on the show, Derek. The Zerona laser is one of the key ingredients that we use to help our patients on their weight loss journey. It is FDA approved and check this out. It offers no downtime, no swelling, no bruising, no pain, no heat and no cold. So patients are virtually feeling nothing at all undergoing treatment. Now the way it works, Derek, is that the laser itself creates tiny microscopic tears into the fat cells. Before a 20 minute session is done, the fat cell has already collapsed and all you're left with is just the shell. What you're seeing on screen now is an animation of what's happening. So at zero minutes, it's plump, as you can see at the very top. Before a 20 minute session is done, as you can see at the very, very bottom, the fat cell has collapsed. It is filtered through the lymphatic system causing a slimming effect. It is filtered through the lymphatic system and excreted through bodily fluids such as urine and sweat. And the results are immediate. Patients will see the results the very next day and we guarantee three to 11 inches in just two weeks. So typically it's about half a pound to a pound per visit, Derek. Half a pound to a pound. And this is something that, that people can see how quickly, Laura? How, how long does it take to see the results? Uh, the very next day. So one of the things that we offer is an analytical scan. The scales that, that we use are very analytical. They not only give us the weight of the patient, but it tells us how and where the weight is being distributed, which makes it more, very motivating for the patient to see that fat level is zoomed down. And if that's not motivation, motivation enough, I don't know what is. <laughs> yeah, motivation is everything, right? So, and I noticed, Laura, in the animation, the way the laser is focused, it seems that um, focusing on sort of like the center core of the body, but you also have the ability to target other areas of people's bodies, right? Right, let me explain. The laser itself has arms, so we can meticulously angle it in different target areas. However, because it is filtered through the lymphatic system, Typically, we angle the midsection, but it causes a slimming effect. So it will not um, call, it, it will not be limited to just the tummy itself. It's going to be filtered throughout the entire body. So you uh, you will actually be receiving a jawline, and we and we're not even placing the laser in the face. So it causes a slimming effect overall. And we're seeing some of these before and after photos. I mean, clearly you have satisfied customers who are who are noticing a difference in the way they look and the way they feel. There are, you know, a, a number of options for people to lose weight. So what really is it about you guys that sets your, your organization apart? We have the latest technology. We hand select the staff and we listen to the patient's needs, their goals and their target areas. Another thing that sets us apart is that the results are immediate. We live in an era right now that we want immediate gratification. And this is what this machine offers. The results are immediate, which makes it very motivating. And every time we see you on the show, Laura, you always have an offer, a special offer for our viewers. So explain to us what today's offer is. So today's offer, typically it's uh, $2,400 for a transformation package. However, it's over half off today at 1000 and if you're one of the first 100 callers, we'll even throw in an additional three sessions for free. Uh, you must be the first 100 callers that we're only giving away to the first 100 callers. And that number is 281-888-3094. We have uh, operators standing by now. And you do have treatment centers uh, all over the Houston area. Earlier, we were mentioning just how long it takes to drive from one side of the city to the other. But you have Galleria, Spring, Clear Lake, Katy, Sugarland. So there is a there is a clinic, a center near you. That's right. And we even expand it to Dallas for those that, are li that live in the Dallas area. And take a road trip to Dallas and, and lose a few pounds. Well, Laura, it's great to see you. Thanks so much uh, for your time today and the explanation. And drink a lot of water today, right? That helps with weight loss, too, if you drink a ton it of does. water. 
You got it. It does. <laughs> Stay safe. Hydrate. Lose some weight. Laura Alexis, it is great to see you. Thanks again. And to our viewers, if you would like to schedule that free consultation, you can call 281-888-3094 or you can go online to their website, InnovativeLasersOfHouston.com. All right. Still ahead on Houston Life, we're going to see if Lauren Kelly was successful learning how to change that tire outside. Oh, wow. Jack it up, Lauren. parking lot we are here learning how to change a tire with our friends at you do it auto repair and this is so cool they're basically trying to save you money because you come in you take your car and you fix it yourself they've got the supplies they've got the auto techs there to help you and my friends marcus and rachel are here today to help me learn how to change a tire and so far we have successfully loosened up our lug nuts and we have jacked the car up to where it needs to be to put on our spare tire rachel did i miss anything no you didn't <laughs> what is the next step for this process. So now we're going to go ahead. We've already pre-loosened the lugs up. So now we can just go ahead and turn them right okay. off. Take them all the way off. Yeah, you want to make sure you don't lose them so you okay. put them in a good spot. Okay. There's a couple in here. And we were chatting about this before, but like this is a great skill to have. But if you are on the side of the freeway, this is not something that you need to be spending a lot of time on just for safety measures. Exactly. If you have the access to call for help and you're on the side of the road, this is kind of like if you are in the middle of nowhere, last resort, and you have the knowledge, you can go ahead and do that, right? Yes, exactly. Especially at nighttime, this is not something you want to be doing. Exactly. Um, this is a, it's a good skill to have, but right. it's not something I recommend just going out and doing for fun. Okay, okay. Um, <laughs> this one's a little bit sticky. Yeah, it's going to be kind of hard because the tire's loose, so. Okay, here we go. Let me just try to get it. My gloves are a little bit loose. <laughs> oh! Hey, Marcus, we got a... Oh, there we go. We can use our, our handy-dandy tool right here. Get the right okay, we'll get on this here. one on. Of course, nope. it's the last one. Last oh, one. Okay. Third's the charm. <laughs> it's just on there pretty tight. So let's just try one. That's the one that gets stuck, Marcus is saying all the time, huh? So yeah, this is so like you want to go thing. ahead and hold it in place a little okay. bit so we can. All right, we're just taking this last one out. We've saved them so we don't lose them. And this car did have a spare in the trunk, right? Yes, you always want to check. This is something you want to do beforehand. Um, you don't want to get in a situation right. where you don't even know the condition of your spare tire. Right. Tires generally have um, a lifetime um, of six years, so they recommend after six years old. Okay. They're non-serviceable. Gotcha. So in a way, it's like a mattress. You need to just change it. Exactly. Okay, we're gonna take this one off. Okay, so drop this one. And then the spare is a lot lighter. Oh yeah. We'll put this one on. And we're gonna use the same lug nuts for this one? Yes. Okay. Put it on there. <laughs> a little bit over. There we go. All right, you guys. Thank you so much for helping me learn this process today. It's really, really wonderful. And I love the fact that you have women's classes just for ladies who might be intimidated by auto technicians. And people like you, Rachel, are here to teach us. And I think that's fantastic. You can get all the information at You Do It Auto Repair. HoustonLife.tv. I'll post a picture later of our finished product. Air high five. Socially distant high five. <laughs> back to you guys. Okay. You got two thumbs up back here in the studio. Four yes, thumbs up. Stay back. safe out there, guys. Thanks for that. We'll be right back with a look at what's happening on tomorrow's Houston Life. Coming up tomorrow on Houston Life, we've got some hairstyling secrets like how to prolong your cut and color without going to the salon. Plus, quick and easy styling tips for Zoom calls, very important, with celebrity hairstylist Joseph Main. He's worked with stars like Katie Holmes, Sophia Bush, and Kate McKinnon. Plus, tomorrow's National Mac and Cheese Day. Lauren Kelly shares a super simple recipe, perfect for celebrating that cheesy goodness. She'll show us how to make back bacon mac and cheese bites. Ooh, bacon mac and cheese bites. That sounds good. Brandon, was that your first time reading the prompt? That was my first time. It wasn't so bad. You did a good job. Thanks. Have you had fun today? It's been a blast. I love it. You were a little nervous this morning. He yeah. was kind of unsure how he got himself into this. You just never know what's going to happen on Houston Life. But that's what makes it so great, dude. Exactly. Loved it. <laughs> okay, good. And uh, you, the, our viewers, you guys are so great. We love you so much. And uh, we got some more comments here. Which one of you likes to eat the end piece of the loaf of bread? This is from Lizette. And Brandon, I don't. this one. I don't. I'm not a big fan of the heel of the bread. But Brandon takes 
the heel of the bread because it's typically seen as like the bad piece. Yep. So he'll he'll always take like the bad piece. Or Anytime the I leftover. cook something, I always give him the nicer one. And you always give me like the last bite of something, yeah. like a dessert. It's true. When we do eat dessert. Uh, okay, some more comments. Let's, let's put them up there. Kim writes in, I still want to know more about the plant-based diet. Can you talk about some of the recipes y'all use? Well, Brandon, this is really your wheelhouse. Yeah, um, we, I grew up not eating a lot of meat. Um, just I was never really a fan of it, but I'm always researching and looking up new recipes. There's, there's a ton of them out there, super easy to find, and they're actually not that hard, and they taste really good. How do you find them, though? Because he, I think I mentioned on the show, Brandon will use cauliflower and mushrooms, it, put them in the food processor and then sort of like cook the water off and add a tomato sauce and it's like a bolognese. Yeah. Sorry, I heard that sound. Um, Are yeah. you, what sound? Nothing. There is a byproduct of eating a plant-based diet, which we have <laughs> definitely experienced two, two, beep, at, beep. at our house. <laughs> I'm not playing those sound effects. I literally, for a second, I thought that maybe there was an issue. <laughs> oh my God, could you imagine? <laughs> like live, I bring you to work with me and this is what you do on live TV. <laughs> That's what I thought. Yeah, the plant-based diet is great, but yeah. it can just lead to some extra gas as your body gets used to doing it. But we grew up, I mean, eating out of our garden fruits and vegetables, yeah. so we really didn't eat meat Same. just because we just didn't. We, we ate out of the garden. Peppers, fruit. A lot of it. Yeah. Well, thanks so much for filling in today, Brandon, thanks while Courtney's me. off. Yeah. And thanks Super to fun. all of our viewers uh, for your sweet comments. We'll try to answer the, the questions that we didn't get to on the live show today. We'll try to answer them on Facebook a little later on. Any parting words before we go? Have a great week. Yeah, have a great week. Stay it's cool. Monday. Drink some water. Drink a lot of water, folks. We'll see you again tomorrow. You want to fill in again? I'll do it. Yeah? It's fun. Okay.